Evening, guys. Welcome to Life Group. Um, this evening, we're talking about these two strange things that your pastors would have said on Sunday. One, um, that we are Jesus' succession plan. And secondly, that God thinks that the best way to make disciples is you and me, that we're the best way to make disciples. Those are pretty strange thoughts. When I think about succession planning, uh, my mind immediately runs to thinking about CEOs who are busy deciding who's going to take over the company from them, or sports captains knowing they're going to leave the field and making sure someone else is ready to take their responsibility, or maybe a general who thinks he's going to peg on the battlefield and needs to have someone ready to step up and take command. Uh, And that can sound a little bit out there, but imagine you had to have a succession plan. Imagine you had to have someone ready to become you if you were to leave. So, So for me, I'd have to think about someone who I could trust to look after my wife and keep her safe, and maybe a little less importantly, but almost as important, look after my puppies and keep them safe. Um, or to take my role in the kloof site that we're building. And if you make it personal like that, it becomes quite a big thing to think that you'd hand over being you to someone else once you were gone. And Jesus had this exact same dilemma. He had to think about who he was going to hand the baton over to, to be him, essentially, once he was gone. And Jesus thought about this, and his decision was to use his disciples as his succession plan. And the world may call you a Christian, but you know better. You are actually a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now, disciples are two things, really. A disciple is part student and part trainee impersonator. If you're a disciple, you understand that the person who's discipling you, you're very soon going to become a mini-me of. uh, And the disciples would have understood that. So they would have realized that Jesus' mission was one day going to become their mission. And that's exactly the same for you and me. That's what the guys were proving to us on Sunday, um, that Jesus' mission is now my mission because I'm his succession plan. And if Jesus' whole mission was about making disciples, that means my mission has now become making disciples. I've got to take over Jesus' earth operations in some way because I'm a disciple. We, we see it happen in Matthew 28 where he hands the baton over and says, right, all authority has been given to me, now go and make disciples. That can be daunting when you think about it like that. It can be scary to think that Jesus' job is now our job. Now the good news is that Jesus hasn't died or retired, been killed on the battlefield, or anything like that. In fact, he promises in Matthew 28 to never leave us or forsake us. It's like we've got the best of both worlds. You've got to imagine that, yeah, the buck no longer goes up the chain of command. I have now had the baton handed over to me. But imagine the CEO who retires and and puts the new guy in place, then decides to stick around the whole time and, uh, and coach him all the time and give him tips and use his experience and all his networks to set the guy up to succeed. And after hours, will run and make up the difference where the, the new guy maybe was not able to, to fulfill the job correctly. That's exactly what Jesus is doing for us. That's why it's so important in Matthew 28 where he says that I will be with you always to the end of the age. We understand that that's the Holy Spirit who's come to be alongside us. So it can seem really daunting, this idea that, sure, I'm Jesus' succession plan. He's handed the baton over to me. But he's not died or gone away. He's promised to stay right with us and set us up to succeed. Now, knowing that Jesus is with us all the time might be encouraging, but it's still often hard for us to get going. It feels like this disciple-making sounds like a difficult job. Uh, And was Jesus really smart to leave this up to me? And this evening, we're going to try and figure out some practical ways to do this. What you'll probably find is that you've actually been making disciples already by accident. Maybe just not for who you thought you were discipling them towards. But nevertheless, we're doing this more naturally than we think. So we're going to end up getting quite practical about how it is that I'm going to do this whole making disciples thing. Um, but what we learned on Sunday was that it can be divided up into three pretty simple steps. If I'm going to go about making disciples, I'm going to have to love, lead, and then launch people. And to get us in the frame of mind where we no longer think that's overwhelming or, or I'm underqualified, I'd like us to start to talk about how we were discipled. Because at some stage, almost certainly in your life, you've been well-loved or well-led or well-launched. Um, and if we can chat about that a little bit and about how we were discipled, that will set us up to get really practical about how we're going to disciple the people that we have influence over. So let's start that conversation.